Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we'd like to take a look at the Satori TW29BN Dome Tweeter. Now this is a beryllium dome tweeter uh, from SB Acoustics. And so I just wanted to look at the tweeter uh, today in the 1159 waveguide. So this is uh, a very uh, high-end tweeter. Um, you can see from uh, Mattisound currently it, it's in the 406 US dollar a piece category so it's it's definitely up there in cost and so the question being does it perform so let's just go through some of the features of this tweeter so we have uh, dual copper caps uh, for minimum voice coil inductance and minimum shift and then it has a t-shaped pull piece so anytime you see these uh, features basically what they're trying to achieve um, you have the motor you have the magnetic field that's in the magnetic gap and then you have that voice coil that's in that magnetic gap and so when that voice coil uh, moves out of the gap what you want is the same motor strength regardless of the position of that of that uh, voice coil and so what that's going to do is create a very low distortion driver anytime that voice coil loses strength um, because of a reduction in the strength of the magnetic field or for example if the magnetic sh field is shifting uh, due to currents in the voice coil um, then you're gonna see distortion so that's the goal with the copper caps is to stabilize that magnetic field um, the T piece is to create a very flat uh, BLX curve actually which is a measure of the motor strength in, uh, depending on the position of the voice coil and the gap and so um, so they're really kinda going to extreme efforts here in the motor to try to create a very low distortion motor and then to top it off, they have the beryllium dome. And so the idea there is that the mechanical breakup of the dome itself is pushed way outside the audible pass band. And so today we're gonna look at some objective measurement out to 50 kilohertz and just to confirm uh, if this does indeed perform uh, considering the cost. And so the um, 1159 waveguide is shown here. Um, a customer had sent me these speakers that he built and he wanted me to develop a passive crossover uh, for this. It's a three-way speaker. Today we're just looking at the performance of the tweeter. I'll show the performance test data for the other drivers. Uh, but today we're gonna look at a full set of measurements and uh, and then also look at you know a typical passive crossover and, and the implementation of that uh, for a two-way application using a 1.5 kilohertz crossover. So let's get into the uh, objective side on the test data. So here we have the raw frequency response. So this differs quite a bit differently from the published data uh, where the response is measured on a test baffle. And so you can see here that it's a, a flat response there. Now the, the 1159 waveguide is providing around a 9 dB increase in sensitivity uh, starting at around 1.2 kilohertz. You can see the effect of the waveguide there. And so we need to account for that in the passive crossover, which we'll do in a minute. But for now, let's look at what happens when we extend the response graph out to 50 kilohertz. And so we can see that the tweeter remains linear out past 30 kilohertz, where we have a breakup at around thir uh, 33 kilohertz there, which is pretty mild with about a two or three dB uh, peak there in the response. So um, moving on to the passive crossover, I just kind of wanted to go through almost like a narrative uh, how I developed the crossover for this. So we can see the effect of the various components as we add them in. So we have 3.3 microfarad capacitor. You can see the effect of that there with the blue response. Moving on to the um, changing it to a two-way with the addition of the 0.75 millihenry inductor. You can see here that it steepens the slope in the high pass with the red curve. Um, so matching the sensitivity to those to the other drivers in the system, um, adding a 10 dB fixed resistor L pad here is going to bring it down to what you see here with the green. So what we have is the response shown. And so for the further testing with distortion, we're going to test it with this in place um, just so that it's a more real life example um, in an in a applicable speaker. So, so measuring off axis at 15, 30 and 45 is shown here. And so you can see the effect of the waveguide providing 
a consistent uh, constant directivity coverage and it's also uh, devoid of any reflections or diffraction off the baffle which would show up as anomalies in these uh, various off-axis responses so the time domain performance i'm looking at burst decay and uh, the csd plot so starting with burst decay um, you can see that this is extremely clean completely devoid of any time domain stored energy re re resonances even if we extended out the results to 50 kilohertz you can see that any uh, artifacts are damped out by about eight uh, periods there so um, anytime I find that you have resonances that will continue to ring past the eight periods say at around 18 for example then I do find that that's audible however even in this case this resonance here at 32 kilohertz it's completely outside the audible passband so it's completely a non-issue um, so here with the CSD very very clean CSD plot and so the mechanical breakup being well outside the audible uh, passband so uh, looking at harmonic distortion I first tested at an 85 dB test signal um, we can see down here in the graph at the various second third and fourth harmonics so third harmonic is 0 0.018 percent distortion um, if we look at the same results but with the vertical scale and the distortion changed to dB, we can see that it's minus 74 um, dB with the, the harmonic distortion. So really no, low numbers. In fact, I've not uh, measured lower numbers than this for a tweeter. So um, it's, it's just an exemplary outstanding result on this. So um, if we increase the test signal from 85 to 95 dB, uh, we see distortion um, at 0 0.004 for the third harmonic. So um, looking at that in terms of dB, that's minus 87 dB. So incredibly low. I believe that's um, approaching the distortion performance for the Scarlet Solo mic preamp, which is around minus 90 dB. So we're down into um, the noise levels for the electronics themselves. So um, this tweeter certainly is not going to be a bottleneck uh, in terms of distortion. Confirmed again with intermodulation distortion uh, using an 85 dB test signal, we're at minus 74. Um, so even with a very difficult test signal such as the multi-tone, multi-band um, distortion is basically the lowest, the lowest that I've measured from any tweeter. Uh, in increasing the test SPL to 95 dB, we see again minus 64 dB on the IMD. So this uh, represents the best yet as far as distortion. Um, it's an incredible result. And so just to conclude the video, um, the tweeter obviously is, is uh, recommended uh, for if you're looking for basically the ultimate. Um, the only drawbacks being the overall sensitivity. Um, it's around 93 dB sensitivity for those looking to use low power tube amps. Um, it's unfortunate that we can't get more sensitivity out of this tweeter, um, but that's uh, the way it is. So. Um, that's it for today. Take care and have a great day.